Hi everyone and welcome to today's session uh, which has been sponsored by Netcetera. Today we have a great panel discussion entitled The Power of Secure Digital Payment, The Road to Boosting Conversion Rates. I'd like to introduce you all to our moderator for the session, Mark Rennie Davis, who is the founder and chief consultant at Advista Consulting. Mark, I'd like to hand over to you to get things started. Thank you very much, Julia. Uh, yes, my name's Mark Rennie Davis, and uh, I think uh, to kick off in way of introduction, um, I'll let each of the panelists uh, go ahead and introduce themselves, perhaps starting with Kurt. Yes, my pleasure to be here. Uh, I'm Kurt Schmidt. Um, I'm with Netcetra since three years. Uh, at that time, uh, Netcetra took over a company I founded in the digital payment space. And nowadays I'm responsible uh, for innovation and marketing for our secure digital payment division. This is covering everything around 3DS products. So authentication in e-commerce, uh, but also uh, tokenization, uh, wallets, mobile payments. So uh, happy to be here uh, and looking forward to a fruitful discussion here on the panel. Sama. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sam Solomon. I am the managing director of uh, the Middle East business for Network International have been in payments for more than 20 years, started my career with Citibank and joined Network 20 years ago. So I've done payments in and out from a network solution to an acquiring solution that projects have been through the whole payment ecosystem. Good to have you around. Great, and uh, Abhishek? Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Abhishek Saha. I head the cards business for Abu Dhabi Commercial Bank. ADCB is one of the largest uh, cards and payments player uh, in uh, UAE. Have been with the bank for now almost uh, 14 years. Um, prior to that, uh, uh, ICICI and HSBC in India, same payments experience of now close to uh, 17, 18 years. So have done the full drill on the issuance side and uh, good to be on this uh, panel today. Look forward to any engaging discussion. Thanks, Mark. Great. And last but not, not least, Jerome. Uh, hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm very happy to be uh, with you guys uh, today. So thank you very much, uh, Mark and everyone. Uh, I am with uh, the MasterCard uh, digital payment team. Uh, for uh, now a bit more than four years and I've been, uh, ba I've, uh, I'm based in the region for now more than two years and before MasterCard I have six other years of experience in payment, uh, mm -hmm. working in the fintech industry for instance uh, and prior to that I've been working 10 years uh, in the telecom industry, so 20 years in total. Great. Thanks very much and welcome everyone to the virtual fireside. I think it was very cool the way we got revealed one by one there. It, I think, created a sense of anticipation in the introductions that we're not used to. Um, so, you know, the overused word of 2020 is unprecedented, right? You know, it's been an unprecedented year for a very obvious reason. Um, I, I think just setting the scene, because no Zoom call, right, on the subject of payments is complete without discussion, briefly, and it, at least about the pandemic. So I'd, I'd like to ask the panel, you know, what effect has the pandemic had on your payments business in terms of specifically the customer need and how you're responding to that? Um, perhaps start with Kurt. Yes, so um, thank you for the question. I think we have seen a lot of effects and um, in general, despite all the negative side of Corona for digital payments. Um, I think I like Corona because it's uh, accelerating a lot of, of uh, new developments. And, and I want to outline this a bit further. So first we have for sure seen shifts in transaction volumes between different merchants. Some merchants, especially leisure travel industry uh, has, has gone down. But, but, but others uh, have gone up. Uh, everything that is so say, on more on the commodity side uh, increased. And we see an overall on our transaction volume in e-commerce 
we see a, a, a slight increase. So compensating the losses that we still suffering on, on travel entertainment, uh, leisure industry, uh, they have been recovered by, by other industries. Um, what we also see is a, a strong move from cash to uh, 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 card payments. Um, I think also with a strong trend to local schemes, uh, like for here in Austria, I can tell that the, the numbers of Maestro and especially uh, contactless transactions have, have skyrocketed. So uh, contactless, I think, is now over 70%. And this also has an increase to mobile contactless. And we have seen also this as we are offering mobile contactless solution to the market. Um, with contactless, what was not possible before uh, and, and in, in discussion for many years, the limits have increased, which, which is easing a burden for the consumer. So uh, here in Europe, typically you can now without authentication tap for uh, 50 euros, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and, and, and what we have also seen and what we have heard, and uh, this is for me a very good effect, in e-commerce, people have been forced to look to online shopping. So we have seen figures that around 20% of the newcomers um, of, of e-commerce are newcomers. They have never done any e-commerce shopping before. And, and this is for me in total accelerating really the, the, the way to digital payments. So despite all negative effects on economy, uh, Corona has, for me, um, Corona on the payment and digital payment industry, I think is a booster. Interesting, interesting. Um, Abhishek, what's the view from an issuer? So uh, I, I would fully agree to what uh, Kurt just mentioned. So as an uh, as an issuer of scale, we have seen a couple of very obvious uh, uh, trends that have come out. Uh, we have seen contactless transactions increasing in our base. We have seen uh, onboarding of cards to uh, digital wallets, uh, the likes of Apple Pay, Samsung, Samsung Pay increase. Uh, contribution of such transactions within our base has increased exponentially. Initially, we thought it was primarily because the uh, the denominator shrunk, okay, because the uh, we had an economy lockdown, malls were shut, uh, so it was primarily because of that. There, there's a bit, bit of factor into that, but after the economy has opened up, we have seen the percentage and contribution still holding good. So to us, that is a, like a permanent conversion of customers accepting uh, putting on their card credentials uh, on, onto the uh, onto their mobile phone. So that's trend number two. E-commerce, of course, have gone. We have got new customers coming in. Uh, what we have also seen is uh, on contactless. Uh, primarily, we were we were we were contactless ready long time back. Uh, the entire credit and debit cards portfolio of the bank is uh, you know contactless enabled, and we started the contactless uh, journey, uh, journey with. Uh, with our good friend Samir, uh, way back in 2007, you know when we issued the first contactless card in the, in in the UAE. So in somehow uh, COVID kind of you know uh, kind of validated all the investments we had put in uh, for for uh, so long. To add to the digital payments, uh, as an issuer, we are also lenders. So we have also seen one one of the one of the not so good effects of COVID obviously has been the stress on payments. Uh, where customers have started opting for, you know, started showing preference for paying back in installments, what we fashionably call as BNPL. So, so some bit of uh, stress has come onto there. Uh, and that's more or less as an issuer. Uh, yes, transactions have gone, transactions have gone more digital. Uh, but at the same time, there has been this demand for uh, eased out lending. Interesting. That's interesting Samo. well uh, thank you Abhishek for remembering that uh, we supported you on, on issuing actually the first contactless card in the UAE was done with ABCB and I remember those days uh, it's an early investment that paid back uh, longer term but usually when you are first sometimes you're criticized that you have put money in 
but I think that is one area that ADCB has been uh, forward looking in and invested in heavily. But let me tell you about the impact of COVID basically. The impact was not only on, on the payment ecosystem, it was on us and the way we operated as an organization. I'll start from there. Basically, uh, we used to all work under one roof. We started working remotely immediately, and this is another area of investment that we did as an organization to ensure that this capability is there. So we were able to, to serve our customers remotely, and we prioritized basically ensuring that our systems and our capabilities are available to, solve, to serve our clients. And our client base are a mix of issuer banks, uh, similar to ADCB, and merchants that are large retailers, small businesses, and what have you. These two have different needs, and basically we, sh we, we prioritize being up and running while maintaining the safety, of course, of our employees. Uh, that, I would say COVID-19 caused a big disruption to the business and the way we do the business and to our customers. SMEs str really struggled during that period. And as an organization, what we did is that we introduced a We Care For You campaign, which is a financial subsidy to the SMEs to help them manage their operating costs throughout that time. But the bigger question for those was, we have physical stores and they had no capability on terms of going digital or going online. So what we did is introduced solutions to the client to help them go digital. So one of the key priorities that we have set for ourselves is to support the SME businesses and help them convert to go digital. So the first trend that we have seen physically went online. The second key trend that we have seen is banks and financial institutions started looking at, okay, uh, uh, supply, a lot of banks have their stock of cards. However, the demand on virtual cards started to rise at that point as well. So virtual cards uh, is another area that came in from an issuing standpoint. Um, there, there, is a, uh, there was an increase as well in the need for a sustainable supply chain to serve the customer needs and distribution capability. And here I'm talking about if you have a warehouse during the lockdown, getting the goods from the hair warehouse to the, to, the, to, the, to the residents or to the customer was a challenge. So there was an evolution of platforms that serve uh, customers within a vicinity or within a diameter of one kilometer to manage the supply chain. And you have seen also companies like Kareem moving from just taxi to delivering goods for you. Um, so we have seen a lot of transformation on the operating model during the COVID, uh, which had a significant impact on the transformation from, um, first of all, physical to digital, and actually um, a transition from cash to digital as well. In certain areas, uh, we have seen uh, the virtual doctor uh, picking up significantly, uh, we have seen uh, real estate businesses and tenancy now going online uh, uh, versus historic they demand cash and cash is the best thing for them or checks. Uh, and I've seen a lot of industries that started to tap into moving into digital. Um, finally, um, the, the, the importance of data became really high and, and the need for that became really high to enrich decision makers in decisions like opening businesses and what have you in the future or, or during the lockdown government looked at data in terms of impact on economy impact on businesses a number of transactions to help them make informed decisions about uh, uh, the future i don't want to forget one key component that evolved also due to covid uh, which is the importance of domestic spends to the economy uh, in the uae almost 30%, between 25 to 30% of the spends are international spends with what I mean, people coming from outside, visiting the UAE and spending foreign uh, spends in the market. This disappeared due to COVID, which had a direct impact to us and to our customers. Um, however, since the ease of the lockdown and the opening of the malls and what have you, the domestic spends started to come up and increase to uh, cover the gap that was created by uh, the international spends locally, and Abhishek uh, would, would, would have a view on that as well. But these are the main trends that we have seen, and as an organization, uh, 
how to react to it and the speed of response was quite critical due the due to the covid right. uh, during the covid and this is something that i would um, like to yeah. have our customers uh, admit uh, or or support us on that mm. thanks so so i mean summarizing this operating operating model uh, impact of course technology and delivery as well um Jerome, j just in the interests of time here, let's have a scheme perspective. Do you have anything to add? There's, there's obviously a, a convergence here in uh, uh, similar kinds of experiences verging towards digital across the board here. Yeah, thank you very much, Mark. So I'm fully aligned uh, with, uh, with uh, Kurt, Samir and uh, Abhishek. Um, a few things I would add is the fact that um, when we see uh, the uh, increase uh, in terms of uh, growth in the online transaction volume, uh, this is definite uh, increase in the online growth uh, volume of transaction and we see it in the groceries and in the health. So in, uh, in MIA uh, and in UAE, uh, groceries and health were something offline, uh, but now it became uh, something online because uh, uh, of the lockdown, because of the crisis. Uh, and uh, even after the lockdown, a lot of people are still ordering groceries online. And a lot of people are um, uh, have appointments with doctors uh, online as well. So that's one of the change uh, we've seen. And um, some groceries that were not offering any solution online had to move online, like Samir was explaining. So, for instance, um, in UAE, we have uh, a big supermarket brand called uh, Spinez. Uh, thanks to the coronavirus crisis, they moved their business online uh, as well as retail. So that's one thing I wanted to add about the fact that the volume did grow uh, online for the volume of transaction. Then the other thing is um, about the... Um, the cash. So uh, I think Kurt was talking about that. So in MIA, we, we have a lot of cash heavy uh, markets. And uh, this is another uh, small uh, advantage uh, in the digital payment, uh, thanks to the pandemic, is the fact that a, um, a lot of people moved uh, to a card contactless or mobile contactless payments uh, in store. And um, like in Europe, uh, in MIA, uh, government did increase the, um, the threshold uh, for uh, requiring a PIN. So in UAE, for instance, it used to be uh, 300 dirham uh, before the crisis. And during the crisis, it moved to uh, 500 dirham. Uh, so which is a bit more than uh, it used to be at 60, uh, 70 euro. And now it's uh, 120 or 130 euros. Uh, and the other thing is that the merchant, the merchant were uh, actually actively pushing consumer to use cards uh, rather than using cash, whereas before it was, uh, uh, it was not, uh, it was, they were pushing for using cash rather than using card. So that's something we've seen uh, in the retail world. Uh, and finally, the last thing I wanted to add is the fact that uh, the volume of digital transaction uh, will be higher than ever in 2020, but actually the value of those digital transactions uh, might be lower or might not be that high uh, compared to the previous year because of course uh, the tourism industry, the airline industry got impacted a lot and they were representing the, the high value of, of that uh, digital transaction. So uh, that's why the, even if the volume is higher, the value might be a bit lower or uh, similar, but we don't see that as a as, a, as an issue as MasterCard uh, digital uh, team because um, the tourism industry will come back. We don't know if it's in a few weeks time, in a few months time or in a few years time, but the tourism industry will come back. And that's why we believe that the digital uh, payment um, uh, did win during that crisis because we're gonna get back to the same level in the tourism industry and retail and health and other industries that increased will still remain. So that's the few points I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Great, very, very interesting, thanks. Um, you, you, you know, we could talk about this all day. Um, you, you know, we've, uh, we've promoted this particular conference call um, around conversion rate and digital. So, so let's focus in a little bit more on that, uh, although the, these are very, very interesting points. So, um, you know, what, what's come up here in, you know, all of your responses has been you know, I, I would summarize broadly under the heading of digital payments, also, you know, e-commerce, but digital, digital is ringing out here. So I'd be interested to understand, 
you know, digital payments, what are they doing for your business? What part do they play in the plans that your business has? Where do you see the upcoming innovations and use cases for digital? Uh, Kurt. Uh, digital payments is in the heart of our business. So this is what we are doing. We are not uh, directly involved in, I would say, non-digital uh, business. So this is what we breath every day. And, and what, what, what I see important is um, what we mentioned, the aspect in, in e-commerce, because this is now the way that we can uh, manage payments in the crisis to shop online, to get new shoppers, um, to, to have... Uh, everyone um, also the giving the possibility to 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 shop from from the sofa um, and and what I see important here is and we have seen this in Europe as a strong push in the last uh, I would say two to three years is the conversion in e-commerce from 3ds1 uh, which is a very um, I would say uh, old technology developed 15 years ago where there have been no smartphones nothing uh, now to 3ds2, and and 3ds2 is offering a lot of benefits to the to the to the e-commerce. It provides uh, more data points, and with more data points, you can do better assessment. And 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 also very important, it provides uh, frictionless flows. So for the user experience, um, it 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 offers a way that um, it is it is less intrusive for the user when there is. Um, exemption of transactions, either they are low value or low risk or whatsoever, um, you can have a frictionless flow and that gives uh, really good benefits. And, and, and I think um, what we, when we look to Europe, uh, a lot of that has been mandated by PST2, but, but despite the mandate that is not valid in, 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 in the MIA region, I think the benefits of having stronger security, stronger um, uh, authentication, two-factor authentication, more data points to increase the conversion. Uh, the findings that we have here in, in Europe, uh, they can also be applied in, 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 the, in the MIA region uh, in order to, to drive this conversion in, in e-commerce. And I, I think on, on the other innovation topics, I, I would like to to speak a bit uh, in the in the in in in, in the coming uh, uh, 45 minutes, but here this this e-commerce and this 3ds new technology, strong customer authentication, the benefits what we have learned in Europe from a mandate that we can bring this to the region, I think that is a big value. Yeah, I mean, why, why don't we stay on that actually? Because you know, I think Europe certainly seems to be ahead of the Middle East. You know largely because of uh, open banking PST2 regulations. Uh, it'd be good to know what we can learn from that, um, you know, particularly around the relationship between, uh, you know, strong customer authentication and the impact that has on uh, 3D secure deployment. Mm -hmm. What's your experience from Europe? Yeah. Uh, so the, the requirement to have strong customer authentication in Europe is a requirement to have two factors for authentication. And, 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 and one factor, so, so two out of three factors, either you know something, you possess something, or you have some inheritance. And, and how people implemented uh, the, 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 the banks and the issues and, and the payment industry, how, how, uh, how the industry implemented in Europe is typically uh, to use mobile phones as the way of authentication. So you have one factor, the possession of your mobile phone. And then as the mobile phones typically today have fingerprint or face ID or whatsoever to use this as a second factor. So what we have seen in Europe is by increasing the security to these two factors, there is, and using biometric technology, we have also seen that the, 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 the user experience and the user's journey have, are a lot easier and loss, a lot uh, without uh, friction. So, uh, the, the, the real benefit is that we have, have seen is onboarding of these of these users and the actual payment is, is 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 much easier by just tapping with your finger or looking into your mobile phone to authorize a transaction, and and so the the regulation in Europe has helped us not only to increase the security this was the intention, but to think about processes that are nice for the user experience. And, and we succeeded in doing so. And I think this is a knowledge we can bring also to the, to the MIA market. 
Yeah, that's that, that's interesting. That's interesting. And it, it, you know, it certainly seems that, that as digital becomes more more prevalent, you know, conversion rate becomes much more important. And clearly, this is, you know, one very effective way of, of addressing this, to, together with other stuff around tokenization, encryption, etc. Um, but but while maintaining, you know, an excellent customer journey. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to ask though, and and actually, I'm, I'm thinking, Sama, you might be the right person to answer this from a, from a processor perspective. Why is conversion rate an, an issue that continues to persist, and and particularly in the Middle East region? Why is that? Thank you, Mark, for the question. So, so basically, conversion rate is uh, is an outcome of a transaction that is developed based on the transaction flow. So if you think about it, 62% of customers uh, stop transacting because of the fear of fraud uh, on, on the internet. 49% of customers, they feel that they are vulnerable on the internet. Uh, as, as Kurt had mentioned, 3D secure proposition that is introduced and if i go back to history in the year 2000 we had e-commerce still at that time but the biggest issue was the full liability was on the customer what was on the merchant in specific and there was no protection uh, in the ecosystem and i think um, to addressing the customer needs by providing them a tool to authenticate the transaction and validate that they are the one contributing in the, in the transaction and the merchant is securing this transaction as well is a key area. And Abhishek, would, I, I would like him to comment on the recent actually versions of 3DS uh, that we have got. But let's not forget one thing. What helps in conversion is the biggest discussion on e-commerce and what differentiates an online space or an, a gateway provider from one to the other is actually the conversion rate. And this includes the security, the value, the experience, the trust, uh, the support and the convenience the customer gets out of this um, experience. So uh, there is a big demand on security, but it needs to be convenient and seamless and frictionless. So it continues to be an area of advancement and development. And there are lots of introductions that technology are supporting today to ensure that the transactions are more secure. 3D really secure is one. There are multiple other uh, uh, security layers that are introduced to help the evolution of the digital payments. But I, I would defer to Abhishek to, to talk about his portfolio and the impact of introducing 3DS on, the, on a portfolio growth and spends online, especially with the current demand um, and the current environment in the market. This becomes more and more critical. Why ease of use is quite critical. Security and conversion rate becomes a top priority. Cool. Abhishek? Uh, thanks, Samir. So uh, I, I think Samir very, uh, very nicely put in the perspective from the merchant side, you know, why, why getting the transaction out is important because th th that's where the gross revenues come from when, when you look at the merchant community. Mm -hmm. So let me add on to it from the, from the issuer side or, or, or the final end consumer who's actually using his card credentials uh, on whether it's an e-com side or whatever. That's, that's a moment of truth, right? Whether he decides how comfortable he, is he with his payment instrument, how comfortable is he with the, uh, with, with, with the security apparatus and the fraud apparatus he believes his bank has uh, put in place. So 3DS, uh, it, within the UE market, 3DS, uh, like in uh, uh, Europe, uh, 3DS came uh, more as a regulation, uh, 3DS 1.0. I think that was, I think, uh, quite some time back. Okay, I think I've forgotten. It was uh, close to 2012 or 2013 is when uh, Central Bank of UAE uh, mandated it. Now, most issuers, including us, we, we, we are now on the journey of 3DS 2.0. Okay, the way we see it is uh, that there are there are multiple uh, as an issuer, uh, there are multiple advantages we we see there. Uh, number one, it eases the friction out of the payment. For for us, it is very important that the customer comes in, he makes a transaction, and it goes out without losing the essence of security uh, in, in that transaction. Because on, only when the transaction goes through, does the merchant turn, and as a result of the sale happening, we as issuers earn, acquirers earn. I mean, the, the, the entire ecosystem thrives when that sale goes through. Let's, let's, let's put it very, very cleanly uh, uh, out there. So 
for us to ensure that each and every transaction goes out without compromising the security or the fraud element or onto that is essential important so we, this this is exactly where if if i look if i look, if i decode 3ds to 2.0 it essentially is risk based authentication okay it is it is about using trusted devices it is about doing device binding right so as issuers we are extremely interested most of our uh, uh, I, if if i were to speak not just for my organization but uh, banks at large uh, most banks who take their payments business seriously are already walking that path okay uh, to ensure that we customers take the friction out i mean uh, do i really need to do a, a two factor authentication for a 20 dollar food online de 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 delivery which i know that my car customer does time and again every tuesday breakfast is ordered from a particular food online uh, delivery platform i don't need a uh, to to send in to invest in and uh, sending out an sms that's just uh, increasing the opex of the business let's put it straight away i can take that out i know it's a, it's the same same customer i know it's the same device i know it's the same merchant okay so there there's a behavioral pattern that issuers will ad adopt to okay same comes in i mean that's that's i would say probably is in the card on in the, in the card on file world right we also see a similar behavior coming up in the tokenized world right when when it comes to tokenized transaction we have new technologies which are coming up and i'm sure uh, jerom probably will be able to elaborate where you where cloud token framework is uh, taking shape right uh token life cycle management that's another uh, problem uh, you know another area which is coming up <coughs> excuse me every time a card uh, a common problem which i'm sure all five of us would have faced is that you know we lose our card or a renewal card comes in uh, we have to update our card credentials at 50 other places where you you have asked your card be it your food online delivery platform be it your insurance payment we had so many things these are all digital payments at the end of the day okay and they deserve to be as frictionless so which is where uh, you know uh, uh, there are some there are some platforms which are coming from schemes whether it's uh, mastercards abu uh, you have uh, visa also has a similar pl pl platform token life cycle management cloud token framework these are all the new innovations which are coming in and uh we as issuers uh, i'm using the word we uh most businesses most banks who take their payments business seriously will ultimately invest in it because let's face it why did we invest in contactless in the first place because we wanted to take the friction out he shouldn't have to you know key in his pins or sign a charge slip at that point in time tap and go here you are not tapping but right. here it is i would say click and go mm -hmm. get in get out first make the transaction make the sale seamless okay so that's and that's where the economy grows and uh, and yes uh, uh, some are alluded to the point of uh, domestic purchases as issuers you know the, the, it kind of an inverse mirror that works out uh, some are uh, in the acquirers were relying on inbound tourist uh, as issuers we were relying a lot on the resident population going out to europe right and the shopping and that is where uh that was a key revenue stream that uh, for us has taken a big hit uh, kind of the uh, sad part of uh, covid so yeah. domestic retail purchases are back okay domestic retail purchases are almost back the economy is on a very strong footing uh, right now uh, and it kind of uh, all the more brings in the importance on why issuers uh, schemes uh, acquirers need to ensure that friction goes out uh make payments as seamless as possible so i'm using the word seamless while you know being in a being in a webinar uh, under the under the word seamless but seamless is really the buzzword that now well um you know i i think we should put this to uh someone from an organization that's in the middle of most of this ecosystem which is a scheme um so you know a, a lot of this this kind of ecosystem that's uh, in development and you know we wonder also what's coming down the pipeline as well you know i'd i'd say jerome you know you you have in front of you here uh, you know a, a technology company uh, a processor and an issuer and of, and, and of course many other types of organizations uh, attending on the phone what would you say to the ecosystem So in, in um, terms of how do we improve our our transaction conversion rate 
Thank you very much, Mark. And thank you, Abhishek. So yes, I, um, I fully agree. And the, the conversion rate is something very, very important. So today, um, online, uh, we see uh, two transactions out of three that uh, do not go through. So uh, someone is adding something, a product or a service in a cart, and two times out of three, that transaction will not be complete. There are various reasons. The, the, the consumer changes his mind, or the payment was such a, uh, was too troublesome and he did not complete the payment, or the, the payment was declined. Many different issues, but this is the case in MIA, two transactions out of three do not go through, do not go through from the time I'm adding something on the cart and the time I complete the transaction. Then there is something else. Um, out of 16 uh, decline, 15 of them are false positive, meaning that they were not actually fraud. But in order to make sure that we cover the, 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 the true fraud, we, we need to decline 16 times more transaction in MIA. So that's, uh, that's another fact. And um, um, the, uh, this question of conversion rate uh, is key to the health and success of any merchant business. The, the higher the card authorization rate is, the greater likelihood uh, for repeat customer transaction and the higher the business revenue. So that's a very important question for the success of all, our, all the merchants. And network tokenization, in addition to uh, 3DS2 or 3DS1, uh, is one of the tools that uh, is helping merchant acquire payment network and issuer uh, in order to have a higher uh, approval rate. And this is something that uh, at MasterCard, we, we focus a lot. Uh, in the MasterCard digital team, um, we have uh, three main focus. The first focus is the device uh, transaction uh, in a market like UAE, for instance. So this is what we, we see with Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, or Fitbit Pay, or Garmin Pay. So any device payment in store or in app. So this is the first uh, pillar for the digital strategy at MasterCard. Then the, the other one is uh, how to enhance uh, card on file uh, checkout. And I think Abhishek was talking about that. So what we are trying to do as, at MasterCard is we are trying to provide the tools for issuer, acquirer, or uh, PSP or payment gateway for tokenizing those card information. I think this is uh, Summer uh, saying that a lot of people don't dare to leave their detail at some merchant because they are worried that there is a hack or um, the data is compromised. Uh, and that's why we have about half, uh, when we are looking at the online transaction, 50% of them are card on file transaction where people dare to leave uh, card information at the merchant. And this is a better user experience, but this might be a bit scary if your data get compromised uh, at that merchant in particular. Uh, and some user experience might be bad because when you have recurrent payment, you have to update your card uh, all the time. And then the other 50% are on guest checkout. So guest checkout is when you don't dare to, uh, to leave uh, information uh, at, um, at your merchant. So you have to manually input all the information. And for the, for the number two and number three, so the card on file transaction, MasterCard has a solution called um, MDES for merchant, which is a network tokenization solution for merchants. And um, for the um, uh, guest checkout, we have another uh, solution that is leveraging on network tokenization as well. It's called click to pay This is an industry standard uh, that is launched uh, in uh, several markets. And this helps with uh, security, higher approval rate, and better user experience. So those are the different technology we are, uh, we are working on to enhance, to improve that conversion rate, to enhance user experience, and to uh, secure the transaction. May I, I'm, may, I'm, may I add sorry. here, Mark, uh, and I think ahead, I want to, to on this on this click to pay because I think that is really an interesting development. Let me let me give you a big, big bit of a history that uh, schemes tried to solve this on a per scheme basis. There was MasterPass and Visa checkout, etc. But 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 uh, now what Sharon mentioned, this click to pay is a standard by Invico Secure Remote Commerce is the name of this standard. And this is a, 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 a framework um, 
that is will be interoperable and, 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 and similar to a, a standard when we tap on the terminal today, every card is accepted typically on every terminal. So we have interoperability there. And the same level of interoperability we will have then also with the, with the checkout in e-commerce sites. There is a symbol, this, this click to pay symbol, a checkout symbol, and that will be a an, an very convenient way to, for, a, for, for a person to do a checkout. And what is important here is that, uh, and, and where is the fraud coming? The fraud is coming that typically pans are stolen or sold somewhere, et, et cetera. And then there is not uh, a good enough authentication. But uh, handling about the pans and all this tokenization is, is a very good technology that we don't, do not need to handle clear, clear pans. We do not need to enter them. We can in the future provision them. We can manage them on our mobile phone. So this device is not only the device we have biometric authentication for 3DS, not having SMS, but really with push authentication and having uh, functionality, but then to manage the tokens and to say, well, I want now to push this token to this merchant from my issuer app. So really connecting the players, the connecting the issuers, the merchants with a seamless experience. And I think these new technologies will really help the, the, the end consumer and improve the security at the same time. And uh, the obvious question, when will we get it? Um, the, 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 okay. the network token is the network tokenization. So MDES for merchants and also v v VTS is, is offering uh, e-commerce uh, tokenization. Is there yet? I, I think we can we can uh, also uh, ask here Sama on 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 uh, uh, the key player here in the in in the region. Uh, when is this uh, when is this technology brought to the to the merchants? Merchants, what is good about this? Merchants will receive from their PSP a token. So the, 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 the card credential is per merchant. So if you would use this from another uh, way, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not possible. So it reduces the fraud. And I think we also explained it is helping in improving, keeping the connectivity between the merchant that is storing this, a card on file or the token on file, and the issuer. Uh, Abhishek mentioned this as well. The a, a problem is that 3% of all cards expire every month and then you, 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 you have a disruption in the payment. But here, you with this tokenization, you, you have a connectivity from the merchant to the PSP over the scheme to the issuer. So once the issuer uh, 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 provides a new card to the consumer, automatically there is a notification and there's no, no interruption of the payment. So I think this tokenization technology is available now. It needs to come to the market. Merchants need to adopt this. Uh, the, 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 the schemes support this uh, and, and, and we need to bring it to the market. So, so Sama, what are the, the plans in the region if I directly put this to you? Well, thank you to put me, uh, for putting me on the spotlight here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the, the great news here is that uh, this technology enables more transactions to happen. And it's in the core of our strategy that anything that helps our merchants to do more transactions, that's a critical point. From an issuer standpoint, of course, we do support our customers with part of this technology. But again, is it uh, enabled across the merchant base? Is it distributed? Is it available everywhere? Not yet. I think it's a great uh, opportunity uh, to address conversion, uh, especially for, for acquirers in specific, and I'll, I'll focus a little bit, uh, from an acquiring or from an issuing standpoint, securing payments means preventing fraud, means uh, minimizing chargebacks, means minimizing risk, thereby you end up with a lower cost, right? So it is efficiency and it is more value to us. So definitely we have it in the roadmap. Some of it is towards the issuing side, some of it is towards the acquiring side. Cannot tell you exactly when, but of course we have delivered some of the tokenization technology for some of our issuers today to support Apple Pay and Samsung Pay. However, to advance it, to update the recent card issue details, this is an area that we are looking at closely, Abhishek. That's absolutely right. 
And uh, just to add on what uh, Abhishek, Sam, Samer, and Kurt was, were saying, uh, in MIA, unlike Europe and North America, uh, a lot of card not present transactions are actually cross-border transactions. They are not acquired in MIA. Uh, because in Europe, most of the card not present transactions are acquired in Europe. And in North America, most of the uh, card not present transactions are acquired in North America. In MIA, it's, it's big amount is acquired outside of MIA. And for those, uh, for those uh, that chunk of car not present transaction that is acquired outside of MIA, most of it is already using uh, network tokenization. So thanks to uh, ADCB and thanks to other banks in the region that support already that network tokenization for merchants. Um, we have a lot of transactions. We have millions of transactions uh, this year in 2020. Um, that are already going through the rail of the network tokenization for merchants. Uh, so it's already live, it's already there. Uh, we just need to make sure that we enable the local acquire uh, for that network uh, tokenization for merchants. And the digital giants like PayPal or many other, they are already on network tokenization. They are promoting network tokenization and for several reasons. So one of the reasons we discussed about it, Abhishek and Kurt did discuss about it, which is the um, ABU, automatic billing update or other solution uh, where um, the life cycle management is managed. So the merchant doesn't need to update the token when the card expired because uh, the issuer will notify MasterCard or the payment network that the card expired. So the token, instead of pointing to an expired card, will remain the same, the token, but will point to a new card, the new card. So the merchant doesn't have to do anything. The consumer doesn't have to do anything. So that's one of the benefits from network tokenization. But other benefits uh, for the consumer is the fact that the card art is displayed uh, for the consumer. So when the consumer needs to choose between different cards, when I need to pay my Uber ride, which card will I pay? I never remember the four last digit of the card that I need to use. But if I see the card art, it's very easy for me to make my decision. Or if I don't trust the merchant, but if I see that he has access to my card, the card art, I will give more trust in that merchant. So that's a better user experience as well. And then, of course, better security because storing a token is much more secure than storing an FPAN. If a fraudster uh, get access to that token, that token will probably be no use for the fraudster because that token can only work with that merchant and can only work with a dynamic cryptogram that is associated to that, uh, to that token for every single transaction. It's a unique one. And finally, um, uh, increasing the approval rate because the issuer is involved in the tokenization. Mr. So the, 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 the acquirer or the merchant will notify MasterCard that um, uh, I'm adding a card onto my uh, PayPal account. And uh, MasterCard, can I tokenize it? MasterCard will ask ADCB, can, can I tokenize that card uh, for uh, Jerome on that merchant? And ADCB will give permission or not for, uh, for MasterCard to tokenize the card. And then when there is a transaction, the, the issuer gets much more information with a tokenized transaction. So because the issuer is involved in a tokenization when I'm adding the card on the card on the card on file, and because the issuer gets much more information during the transaction, it's likely that the issuer will approve a bit more transaction than without being involved at all, at all when I'm adding the card and without a, a lot of additional information. So for all those reasons, it's already there in MIA, it's already here in MIA, and it's coming for the local acquiring in the, in the very near future. So, thank you. I think uh, when, when, I, when I may add here, we have seen in Europe uh, increases in approval rates at around uh, 6% uh, comparing uh, uh, transactions with card on file versus with, with tokenized transactions which is really a, a, a very good uh, um, in, in, increase in this. And if I may add on, on the same, uh, the, the, so to say, having more information to, make, to assess the transaction, I think is very key. This brings me also back a bit to 3DS. Uh, in the 3DS protocol and with 3DS2, a merchant when using 3DS 2.0, can send around 10 times more data points to the issuer to make a good decision. So we, we, by, by, by having this, by implementing also 3DS on the, on the merchant side, on the acquiring side and sending more information, 
the risk systems and, and, and all the assessment, which will be a lot easier and will also help to, to, to drive the conversion. So um, we have seen in Europe that um, uh, a significant part of the, or more or less all issuers have adopted 3DS 2.0. Um, issuers are ready, but still merchants and their PSPs need, uh, need to go away in order to bring them to 3DS, uh, 3DS2 server. Uh, and there's also the, now the option that 3DS can be implemented in mobile uh, merchant apps for the first time. So you can collect data uh, from, from, from the app, uh, uh, more, more data points, and, and then this data is sent and, and helps also to improve the conversion rate. And, and, and I think um, some are bringing 3DS to the merchants in the region. 3DS2 is, a, is, is, is then really also helping to drive the conversion because there is more data points you can base your authorization decision on. Actually, uh, Kurt, spot on actually and what we look at today are three levels to be introduced on the acquiring space it starts with uh, 3d secure uh, the, the, the 2.0 version which i believe will increase the acceptance uh, the second one is secure remote acceptance which is click to pay and the third one and again the tokenization uh, with an update to um, of card details once it's updated or auto updated to the, to the merchants is another key area that are key in and in our priorities to make sure that we serve our merchants uh, on. From an issuing standpoint, we already implemented the 3DS 2.0 for some of the issuers that we do operate with. But from an acceptance, I think these three layers are quite critical to increase the exception and improve the, accept, uh, the conversion rate uh, back to your point. Um, but I don't have the exact dates. Uh, Jeremy might know uh, more details about that, uh, given that we work closely. Yeah. A couple of years. Um, but again, uh, top priority in terms of conversion, top priority for any acquirer. Yeah. It, it's out of question. Cl clearly, this would be you know a major advancement in, in you know that that question of balance between customer experience and security gets you know almost resolved with this right um but you know and very much in common with many other kind of payment ecosystem uh de deployments you know there's, there's a chicken and an egg here and which comes first right and you know many of us remember uh the efforts in bringing about emv card migration right and the discussions that went backwards and forwards between you know should it be issuers should it be acquirers uh, or the acceptance side broadly driving it you know in, in in this case what can be done to avoid that problem therefore moving forward very slowly right what what can be done to ensure that we we come up that curve in terms of deployment both on the issuer side and the acceptance side quickly right i mean jerome as a scheme i would imagine you have a, a key role to play there yeah, so Kurt was talking about 3DS2 um, status in Europe, and I think yeah. in MIA, it's very similar. Um, a lot of issuers in UAE or in, in many markets in, in, in MIA sorry, are ready, but now we need to have uh, the PSP and the merchants uh, activating and moving to 3DS2. Uh, one thing that is key um, uh, for, uh, for using um, the... MDES for merchant, which is the MasterCard uh, network uh, token solution for merchant. Uh, or what is key for um, uh, what uh, Abhishek and Samer were talking about, uh, click to pay or secure remote commerce, is network tokenization. So issuer and acquirer, they both need to get ready for network tokenization. And most of issuer in markets where Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, Garmin Pay, or Fitbit Pay have launched, issuers are already ready. That's why, um, uh, for instance, uh, uh, ADCB is ready for now a long time. It's because they've done the, in UAE, we have Apple Pay and Samsung Pay for a long time, and issuers have done the work already for all those network token solutions, whether it's for a wallet like Samsung Pay or Apple Pay, whether it's for an issuer app, or whether it's for uh, a merchant, 
for the network solution for merchant, for instance. So issuer, in a lot of markets where, uh, where we have Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, they are already ready uh, for network tokenization. So now we are, we are in the second phase for those issuers, and the second phase is optimizing uh, network tokenization. So um, issuer, they have to um, calibrate uh, their uh, risk decision system to account for tokenization. And that's what a lot of issuers are currently doing uh, in the region, making sure, so first they are enabled for all those network tokenization solutions, but now they need to make sure that all their system, their risk system, their fraud system are calibrated the, the right way for, uh, for, those, um, for those solutions. And another thing that issuer uh, needs to be ready with is uh, something that Abhishek was talking about earlier. It's ABU, automatic billing update, or similar solution from, uh, from other net, um, uh, payment network uh, where issuer notify the payment network when the card is expired and the new card detail are those ones. So that's something that issuer needs to be ready as well. But in the region, we see that most of the issuer are ready. On the acquiring side, uh, we need to make sure that um, uh, the, token, the tokenized transaction are, uh, are supported. And again, in any market where Apple Pay, Samsung Pay have launched, most of the acquirer will already support those tokenized transactions. Um, with, uh, with, with, so for instance, a Network International already support uh, those tokenized transactions. So network tokenization is the main uh, task that issuer and acquirer need to do in MIA to be ready. But we are almost there, uh, for, at least for all the markets that have Apple Pay or Samsung Pay. 3DS2, uh, and we are there on the issuing side. So now we need to have the merchant as well. And ABU, we are almost there as well, or equivalent product. So this is the three pillars that issuer and acquirer have to work to make sure they're ready for all those solutions uh, we've discussed earlier. Am I answering your question, Mark? Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah, I would yeah. like, Mark, may I, may I add a, a word to a, a, st a statement to this? I think, um, uh, what we also need to look at is that the issue puts the customer in the focus and gives the customer control and power. And with all these new technologies mm -hmm. that uh, we were now discussing, SSC tokenization, etc., 3DS, I think it is important to have a good uh, customer interface to, to, to allow a consumer to manage his payments. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, or uh, speaking about um, a, a control panel for your for your payments and in, in enabling the OEM payments, the push provisioning, managing your tokens, uh, do the life cycle, etc. And I think that is also in the responsibility of an issuer to provide good user experience, good apps uh, to, to 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 their customers in order to to manage the the, the, the the payment flows. We are helping issuers on this as well with some white label applications also supporting all the features that we have discussed today. And I think that is important to put customer also in the focus and in the control of this. Great. Right. Uh, uh, maybe Abhishek, uh, you, the, the, there, is, the, there is an advancement on this area as well in, in the, from an issuer standpoint, and we support it as a processor. I think Abhishek, you wanna touch base on that as well. Yep, sure. Uh, thanks, Amir. Uh, so uh, the, as 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 an as an issuer perspective, so let, let me let, let me touch upon the question mark that you asked. So you know what comes first, the chicken or egg? Okay. If you're in case if, if you are a bank who's who's more forward thinking and who puts payments at the core of their retail banking strategy, okay, you would put you would get the chicken out. You would be ready first, okay, because that's what makes a difference. Merchants will come, okay. Merchants, the moment they see benefit, there is no merchant today in the world who would let go of a sale. Okay, if the issuer has enabled the customer to manage his payments in a frictionless way, much ahead of its time, the issuer will stand to gain. Okay, today with almost hundred percent of our card base contactless, to me it's like a music when I go to when I see a store which has this you know little wife, uh, you know this uh, the contactless sign which most of the store attendants you know, think it's a Wi-Fi sign, which is turned upside down. Okay. When I look at it and when you have, when you are a portfolio where every, when millions of your card holders have their cards enabled, they are able to do that. Whereas maybe some other issuers who are now thinking of it. Okay. 
did users actually go out and say, oh, my card probably doesn't have this, what somebody else's card had. Okay. So yeah. that is where the forward thinking comes into play. Uh, Kurt mentioned about this uh, control panel. Abhishek, another... can, I, can I ask you to, to wrap up quite clearly because we've reached the hour before folks have to drop off. Okay, sure. So this, the control panel that Kurt mentioned about, that's another uh, key uh, development that we have, we have worked on. Of course, uh, uh, Samir and, and Network are our, are our partners in that, which essentially gives the control to the customer's hand. You want, if you want to turn off a particular transaction, you want to control how your transaction goes through, it all adds up to, the, to two points. Take the friction out, build trust. Payments is all about these two tenants. Build trust take the friction out. Then the sale yeah. will go through. And once the sale goes through, everyone on this panel is extremely happy. By the way, I, it's very, very refreshing to, to hear an issuer saying that, you know, the responsibility lies with the issuer. Often it's an issuer saying the response, the, the problem is that the other end of the model hasn't closed yeah. the loop. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay. So it's been a great call. Thank you. Um, really some very interesting perspectives. Uh, you know, I think I think we've 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 covered the whole gamut of what we intended to. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone on the panel uh, and uh, hand back to Julia. Yeah, a huge thank to you all for joining and sharing your insights. That was a really great session. Um, I'd just like to remind the audience that the session will be available for on-demand viewing. Um, so you can make use of it then if you've got any further questions. Um, thanks again to the panelists and to the audience for joining today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye. Bye, -bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.